opening night. I'm JSB. We got Jorge Andres. We're in Miami. This is Mr. 305. We're going to talk to a lot of athletes, media people, and have a little fun. We're going to make you sweat more. We got a couple really, really hard questions for you. Okay. Here come the hard questions. I got a couple of really tough cues coming your way. You're so good at analogies. In other terms, what's Patrick Mahomes and oh. Jimmy Garoppolo? Like, who are they? Oh. <laughs> oh. That's a shit question, and <laughs> you asked it. I respect that. Mahomes is like that golden retriever who's like smart and athletic and can do everything. Garoppolo's more like the like papillon, like just like that beautiful little dog who doesn't have to do that much. <laughs> that is the weirdest question I've ever had today. <laughs> what's the worst question you hate hearing? Uh, what's your favorite song when you're warming up? Uh, what's your favorite song to listen to when you warm up? I see what you're doing, Julie. Yeah. I see what you're doing. Yeah. We're going to do just a quick word association. We'll say a word and then say the first thing that comes to your mind. Oh. Okay, football. Ball. Football. 49ers. Fun. Exciting. Player. What's one word to describe me? Pretty. Thank you. What's all, right, all right, that's good. What's one word to describe me? Ball. What's one word to describe me? Close. How would you describe me? One yeah. word. Bald. 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 One word to describe me? Glasses. I don't know. Would you say classy? Glasses. Oh, yeah. I thought you said classy, but no. <laughs> Wow, I think we just got a scoop. Oh, All right. This better get clicks. Welcome on in. I'm Julie Stewart Binks. We are here in Miami, Florida. We're literally on the beach right now. We came down here to Super Bowl week to give you the biggest interviews with the best athletes, the most famous entertainers, and all the media types you know from TV. Do we have a jazzy set? No. Do we have internet connection? No. We barely have a credential, but you know what? We got a lot of fun. We got a lot of heart. We're all basically drunk all the time. And you know what that means? We're going to be calling it a night. I'm JSB, and I'm so thrilled to be joined by my former colleague, one of my friends, and uh, a very well-known broadcaster, play-by-play, -play, sideline, Fox Sports. But you've done so much. You've literally covered everything, Chris <laughs> Myers. I was looking at your bio. I mean, it goes from the Triple Crown to uh, college hoops to NBA Finals to the sideline for the Super Bowl. You've done this many times before. And one of my favorite clips was, and I, I texted you about this, watching you interview Tom Brady after the comeback yes, against that, Atlanta. Case, and it yes. is, I remember watching it live at the time where <laughs> It, it's insane. There's just, if you haven't seen it, Google it. Everyone's just swarming, trying to get into Tom, and Chris is tasked with interviewing him. What was that like? Well, you're, you know, it's the live broadcast of the game, and the producer is, you, you want to get to him as quickly as you can because it was such a dramatic comeback, and it's Tom Brady. Eventually, you get to him, and then Brady's exhausted, and he's trying to catch his breath, and he really, I don't think he really wanted to, you know, at the moment, he's like, can I, and I was like, well, you know, the only guy, so I was, so I was like, no. They had to take the, right, they had to take the high <laughs> yeah. camera, and I even said, Tom, we're, we're and I just said let's go and I said we're live on Fox Tom so if he didn't want to do it he was gonna have to blow off all of America or whoever else it's was good. watching around the world and Brady's cool even in that moment and it was the you know the year of the deflate gate and the yeah, redemption and his mom had battled the cancer which he overcame that which was so there were so many great stories for him and even for a guy who's won before it was a very touching so eventually he just was as, as good as he always is in an inter interview uh, and it helped that we'd met with him during the week but just getting to him was was the yeah. job and then the questions were you know, you have time for one, two, three, and then you're throwing it, throwing yeah, it back. And people don't realize, sure. like, you got to get to that guy. It doesn't matter what you do, you get to yeah. him. You can't, if you don't, then, like, that's right. that's it. That's it, And yes. you, so you're on the sideline for the Super Bowl this year, and when this airs, we'll know that you are on Chiefs. your Chiefs. Yes. Okay, so how does that 
How do you find get? Does that get decided? So, it, well, Aaron Andrews and I work in the playoffs together. During the year, I do the play-by-play for Fox with mm. Daryl Johnston, so I'm up in the booth. But my my roots from radio into TV were reporting on the field. So, because Aaron works with Joe Buck and Troy Aikman on a regular basis, she gets right. first call, and and usually it's it's a really a collaborative effort. But but it's relationships with which team and that type of situation are you comfortable? And I've covered the 49ers, so is she quite a bit. So we bounced around. She had the the Packers against Seattle, and I had the 49ers against the Packers. So in this case, that's how it all. It just kind of worked it, out yeah, that way. Of, and in the past, yeah, I think she, I think the year of the, that Super Bowl, I had the she she had the Falcons. I had the Patriots, obviously. And there have been a few. This is actually I think my my sixth wow. uh, Fox broadcast Super Bowl. Time that's flies. incredible. So okay, yeah. so for a lot of people, just before we move on, I just have a question. I did sideline. Not yes, for we, the Super Bowl, no, but, but, uh, but, but if for you treat, MLS soccer and NHL yes, hockey. Yes, well, I watch it. You, you, you're ball. good. You know how Thank tough you. it is. It's, you. You've got to be live and quick what, and fit it in. What's one thing we as viewers don't understand what it's like on the sideline of a Super Bowl? Well, I would say it's one of the most difficult things in broadcasting because just for that reason, you all the information you gather, you may only use 10% of it. And the percentage you use, it has to come at the right time, right? And it has to fit. You might have 40 seconds of things you need to say, but you got to do it in 25 because because somebody's scoring or there's a timeout or a commercial or they're snapping the football or whatever sport you're in. And and sometimes you're standing by, it's topical, but they, they want to get to you, but something's happening mm-hmm. on the field, which takes priority. The game is always the thing, and we're there to enhance it and give the information. And then you have to be accurate. And, the, you know, you're focused, but the noise out on the field, the, the, you talk about distractions, there's so much going on. It's just you really have to have that, as you know, tunnel vision and focus and deliver it. And sometimes there are conditions. I've been in minus 20 weather in right. Green Bay where I mean, your lips are or, you know, practically freezing. Yeah, hard to and, do your reports. Yeah, yeah, gloves on that you can't write a note about an injury to make sure you get the, the right medical term. So it's a quick memory, it's a quick delivery, but there's a, there's a great excitement. It's not about being on TV or being on the air. It's about being part of a team uh, that covers something. It gives people information that they might see, but mm-hmm. enhance it a little bit more. At least that's how, how I view it. Man, I would be so nervous if I knew, like, I was in front of 150 million people, just like, don't don't mess up. Yep. So hopefully I don't, <laughs> didn't get in your head there. <laughs> well, no, you know what? Quick story. My first Super Bowl, uh, it was the Patriots-Eagles, uh, Jacksonville, Florida. And I, I was interviewing Troy Brown. He was a versatile player for the Patriots. I'll be quick on this, but uh, just to share this. Yeah. Because, and I'd been broadcast. It's no big deal. This is my first uh, Super Bowl as as the network of the broadcast. And uh, so Troy Brown, I said, hey, I'm gonna, they're going to come to me. I'm going to ask you two quick questions. This is pre-kick after the anthem. I said, don't be nervous at all. There's like 100 million people watching. I don't want you to think about it. And so he's like, all right, I'm good, Chris. I'm good. So they kind of go after the, Chris, let's go down to Chris. And I'm thinking, I just, a hundred million people. I, so, and, 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 I, and, the, and I'm freezing and he taps my face. like, Chris, you got, you got a question for, you know, kind of like, like, let's go. And I'm like, oh yes, of course. And then I, I, I stumbled through it. So I let it after that. It was like never before. I'm always thinking just like when you're up on the yeah. stage, I'm talking to one person out there. So if you think about it, if it gets you in your head. If you think about it. Yeah. I, I mean, it gets in my head thinking yeah. about you having to do it. So Ooh, uh, yes. luckily that's why I'm not on. It. That's why I'm sitting here with <laughs> you, and we are taping this. Thank you so much, Chris, for joining us here on right. Call It and I. You got to watch him on the Westminster Dog Show and <laughs> football, baseball, basketball, everything. Right. Good seeing you. Maybe keep, a little stand up in the future, thinking, okay? Oh, oh, maybe I'll yeah. go on with you. I'll open we'll, for you. Yeah, we'll do it. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back in to Call It A Night. We are having such a great time on Radio Row. It's been a very busy week, but it has been such a fun time. And we are so thrilled now to be joined by Hall of Famer, Super Bowl champion, Jerome Bettis. It is it is amazing to be able to get you on the show here today. Well, thanks for Thank having me. Thank you so Appreciate much for coming it. on. No, you've been, no problem. You've been doing tons of Radio Row stuff. You're yes, here at Super Bowl, and this has got to be such a, a great memory for you because you won it with the Steelers, and then... You retired afterwards in your hometown. Could it have been any better of a storybook ending? No, it could not have been any better. And actually, I embraced all of the media, all of the requests, uh, because one, 
it was my last time, so yeah. that was going to be the end of it. Uh, but two, I also knew that I wanted to take some of the pressure off of the younger players that were going to be in a big game. Obviously, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when, you, when you're in this game, it's significant. So to be able to, you know, win and, and, and walk away, that was pretty special. That sort of reminds me of another athlete, Tara Lipinski, figure skater. She won the Olympic gold medal and then retired right afterward. Did you think about it heading into the week that if I won – I'm going to end this. I did. And so what I what I wanted to do was I wanted to be real clear. So I went and talked to uh, the owners of the team, uh, Mr. Rooney. I explained to him my decision and that this was going to be my last game, mm -hmm. win or lose. Oh, you did? Uh, okay, awesome. And, and, and they understood it. Uh, but I didn't want to tell the head coach because I didn't want Coach Coward to make any decisions that – he would not have made under normal circumstances or maybe start me in the game or playing mm -hmm. me too much. I wanted it to be organic and, mm -hmm. and, and us to win the football game. Mm -hmm. And that was the number one issue. Win the game, all the rest will take <laughs> care of itself. Yeah, that's the first thing. Now, you mentioned Coach Bill Cower. He was just recently announced that he's been inducted into the Hall of Fame. And it was announced on CBS. Yes. What was it like when you found out that news? That was, you know, it, it was amazing because he's the real reason that I was able to get into the Hall of Fame. He had a belief in me uh, that really no other coach had. He knew that that when he put 36 out there on the field that I would come through and produce for him. Mm -hmm. And he came to me time and time again, which enabled me to get into the Hall of Fame. So I was just so happy that he was able to get in uh, because he's more than worthy of that, uh, that, uh, that honor. You got Hertz right now. Yes. Amazing rental car company. Tell us what's up. Well, uh, Hertz has an amazing extra mile campaign that I'm helping them uh, launch. And the whole idea is really celebrating the the gold reward members that uh, have really made Hertz number one. I'm a 20-year uh, Hertz gold member. So wow. I, I, I understand it and I appreciate uh, what Hertz is doing in terms of recognizing all the people that made it number one uh, in the uh, car rental business. And so that it's it's an incredible program, but they've got some sweet sweepstakes involved where they're going to have 50 winners uh, and their friends and family uh, are going to get taken, escorted to the game oh, wow. in these really decked out buses. Right. Perfect. I love that. I love that. <laughs> right. And and then for those people who aren't able uh, to make it to the big game, uh, you know, there, there's an opportunity to win a three hundred dollar uh, uh, gift card from from Hertz to uh, a future rental. And all they have to do is uh, an Instagram post and and put Perfect. it at Hertz. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. That's a great partnership, though. You know, the bus yes. and Hertz. That's match made in heaven. Well, we want to just ask you a couple fun questions in our football game that does not have a title yet okay, okay. so we'll call it the the jerome bettis football game hey let's go um, so we want you to just reach in and there's gonna be a question and then you can give us the goods on what the uh the old answer is best super bowl week memory besides winning <laughs> my best super bowl week memory was my mom and dad came up with this idea that they wanted to have the entire team over our house for dinner so we had 50 players at my mom's uh, house, and she fed all those guys. I Holy mean, smokes. it was so much food you would not believe. Because my office alignment back then, they loved That's to eat. Insane. So it was. Wow, uh, your mom. Yeah, your mom yeah. won the Super Bowl so for it, doing it that. So it was a it was a great experience and something that they were so proud of. So I was happy to see them do it. Awesome. Okay, we'll have uh, time for one more question okay, in there. All right, all right. Toilet paper over or under? I over. <laughs> Definitely over. Definitely over. Under doesn't under. feel right. Yeah, my my drag on the you floor. Hit the floor. Yeah. I'm gonna write these questions and I was like, okay, uh, what is that? Point, what are we, where are we going? That is if great. somebody says under, that's not good. That's good. Then you know that Th they're you can't nasty. Trust, yeah, they're you can't nasty. trust them. I don't know if I can shake the hand. They're no, nasty. oh no, no, they definitely don't <laughs> wash. All right, well, thank you so much, Jerome Bettis, for no joining problem. us here. Uh, make sure you check out Hertz and all the great stuff that they are doing for the Super Bowl. We have a whole lot more to come on Call It a Night, so stay tuned.
Today we're going to make our world's famous mojitos. Awesome. I've never made a mojito before, so I'm excited. So today you're going to learn. This is amazing. Thank you. Yeah. It's uh, I basically cheer, just sipped Cheers it all. to the bartender. <laughs> Bottoms up, bitches. Let's go. <laughs> This is Call of the Night. I'm JSB, and I'm so, so, so excited to be joined by Lily Singh, Hi. host of A Little Late with Lily Singh, and comedian, actor, <laughs> author, just all around badass. Wow. And honestly, this intro. We have had, you know, so many NFL players and stars, and I was like, Lily Singh, number one. I don't care if we get oh, any other interview. I want this girl so on my show. Tell me more. Um, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I will. I will keep going. Um, and I was so excited to watch your debut show as a Canadian, as someone, you know, kind of trying to do comedy. Mm -hmm. And you have done so well with it. Thank and you. being on NBC, how's it been so far? It's been great. I mean, I define success as how much are you learning? You know, of course you can get into the analytics of stuff, but my version of success is how much am I learning in a day? And I honestly, when I go to that show and I'm there for 10 to 12 hours and I go home, I feel like I've learned a lifetime worth of things. And so it's been a great experience. It's super exciting and I hope to do more. We try to do, you know, I said like sports mm -hmm. and trying to do more comedy, obviously very difficult. We just started three months ago, like literally a couple days before you. Uh, but with a host like you, yeah. you guys are on a good start because you're great. Thank <laughs> you. That may have saved my job at least for another week. Um, we're out here doing it in a whole sea of dudes who, by the way, definitely don't look as stylish as us right now. I, I mean, can, tell can we you, exhibit A? Can we can exhibit, we? exhibit can we A1? one <laughs> um, So you are doing this awesome Super Bowl ad. Mm -hmm. Watched it. Make space for women. Tell us about a bit about it. Yeah, so it was with Olay, who I've partnered with for many, many years, and I absolutely love because exactly what we're talking about. They let me be my authentic self. Mm -hmm. They've never made me change. Uh, their products genuinely I love and I use every day. But I... Obviously, being in a Super Bowl commercial is super exciting, but to have it be a commercial with purpose for me is really meaningful and means so much more. It is a campaign encouraging women to get into STEM. And so here's the best part. Olay is putting their money where their mouth is. For every person that tweets using the hashtag Make Space for Women, they're donating $1 to Girls Who Code. That's awesome. It's awesome that because so good. sometimes people don't know how to give back. They don't know how to support causes. You can use Olay's money, y'all, yes. and just tweet. And Olay! Olay! Oh, my Olay, goodness. Olay, 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 oh. Olay, Olay. Flip cup. Yeah. That's what you do in Canada, though. But, like, you know what? people don't do that you in the States. You so much of my respect ah. because... <gasps> I love Flip Cup and no one knows the association. I, I know. No one does. We need to be friends. Okay. Well, this is a thing. Yes, this fine. is a blossoming this is like, of a friendship. This is amazing. We can just go home now. <laughs> Call it a night is like calling it a night. Uh, Lily, thank you thank so much you. You're for so coming good on the show this, today. So I wish you nothing but the best. I'm like blushing. I'm like no, not going to be able to wrap great. up this show yeah. right now. Make sure you check out our Super Bowl ad. Hashtag make space for women from Olay. Yes. And keep killing it. Thank you so much. We are on Radio Row in Miami, Florida, getting ready for the Super Bowl. Tons of stars and stars that happen to have already been on our show once before. And since you've run out of stars, I now you're up I was to me. Like, yes. Hey, you know what? We got to get you back. <laughs> Kurt Menefee, host of NFL. No Fox. more stars are left, so now we bring in Kurt We got Kurt the Menefee. biggest. We got yeah. the brightest okay, star. Right. Yeah. And Thank you. You are going to be hosting the. Super Bowl. I mean, you've pregame is starting right now. I know. Yeah, four and a half hours. <laughs> it goes right? on and on so and on. So this is obviously not your first rodeo. You've done this many times before. What's this experience like? Uh, I don't know. We haven't gone through it yet. <laughs> you know, we'll we'll find out on Sunday. I, I think every Super Bowl is different. Um, every experience is different. I think the, the 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 difference between it and a normal Sunday, which is the question people ask. Obviously, it's four and a half hours versus one hour for a mm -hmm. pregame show. So a lot of it is pacing yourself, is keeping up the energy. Um, but when I say pacing yourself, that pacing starts the week before. Right. You okay. know, you can't go out every night and party. Mm -hmm. You can't do all the scene. You can't do all that thing and then expect to be able to do a four and a half hour pregame show mentally or physically on Sunday. I mean, look. Again, we're not digging ditches or saving lives, but I mean, it it it, it can be mentally, especially exhausting. Right. Um, so you got to make sure you get to that point fresh, uh, and so I, I think that's one of the things is just try and take care of yourself during the week and not go crazy. You are promoting X Tech right now. This snazzy shirt you got on. What? Yes, Tell sir. us about it. Yes, ma'am. 
I said, sir. I, it's, it's I am suit. wearing a it's suit. It's a suit that threw me off. That's what it is. I just have that kind of energy. <laughs> so, you no. Know, yeah, the thing is, got? like X-Tech pads, I mean, they're shoulder pads primarily, but they do rib protection. I think, like, Sam Darnold wore them this year when he injured his ribs. But you go into this game, and I think 80% of the 49ers are wearing them, 70% of the uh, Chiefs are wearing them. And, like, back in the day, even if you look 10 years ago in NFL films, guys had the big, bulky shoulder pads. Whatever the team gave you, you wore. Guys now have a choice. And I think players are looking at it as when they're lighter, they're smaller, but technology has made right. them better. And if I can protect myself as a player right now, then I can play more games. The more games I play, the more money I make, the more money I make, the richer I am. You know, it, like it benefits them from that standpoint. But it's not just professional players. It's high schools that yeah. wear them. It's colleges. I went to Co College, a little Division three school in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Fred Jackson's our only NFL player. Marv Levy, who coached the Chiefs. Uh, and coached the Bills to four Super Bowls. Uh, he went there. But I supplied them with a bunch of uh, pads as well because Division three schools can't afford those kind yes. of things. Uh, Kurt, thank you so much for joining My us pleasure, here. My pleasure, Julie. Always good to see program. you. Of course, you're going to watch the Super Bowl, uh, four-and-a-half-hour pregame show mm -hmm. on Fox and X-Tech. You know, you don't want to get hurt early on? Buy X-Tech. There you go. We'll see you guys after the break. More to come on Call It A Night. Don't worry, I'm not an idiot. I won't Even inhale. Around. I won't inhale. Welcome back in to Call It A Night. I'm Julie Stewart Binks, and I'm excited to be joined by American professional boxer Demetrius Andrade, who is getting ready to defend his WBO middleweight title against Luke Keeler this Thursday at the Meridian in Miami on DAZN. And uh, you just were saying to me, everything's ready to go. What's it like a couple days leading up to the big fight? Calm, relax, you know, getting the mind right, you know, paying attention to, like, the, the details, the small things. And I'm um, getting ready to tune in and let the fire up. Man, I love that energy. What did you just do right there? <laughs> <laughs> I just let a little out, just a little bit, you know, a little, you know, spot. You know. What do you? What is that like? How, how would you describe what you just did on TV for us? <laughs> uh, just a nice crisp jab down the pipe. Wow. You know, just one of those. <laughs> Boom, a little whap. Okay, speaking of jabs, you said that you're going to give Luke the beating of his life. What does that look like? Ah, oh, man, come Thursday night, I guess you have to tune in and figure it and find out. I don't know if you've ever played Mad Libs before. So what it is, is we're going to give you like a little fun trash talking thing. Okay, give me an animal. Hmm, I would like to say tiger. Okay, a place kids go. Zoo. Great, and something small. Um... A yo-yo. <laughs> a yo-yo is quite small. Okay. Hey, Patrick Mahomes. You look like a hairless baby tiger. You don't belong in the NFL. You should be under adult supervision at the zoo. Grow up. Grow up, you little yo-yo. That's perfect. That was Beautiful. All, you put him in his place. Yeah. Demetrius, Ooh. thank you so much for joining us. Right, you know, you, you got a big fight on Thursday against Luke Keeler. Hopefully you'll be defending that that big belt you showed us. So Oh yeah. We want to see it back again. Hey guys, we've been bobbing and weaving all over the show and we're not done yet. We want you to come follow us on all of our social media channels. We've got YouTube, we've got Twitter, we've got Instagram, at Fubo Sports for more exclusive content, behind the scenes, awesome interviews, silly shenanigans. You won't want to miss it. We'll be back with a whole lot more, but right now, we've got to call it a night. And however you may be calling it a night, make sure it's a good one. <laughs>